Moving on from the how to manual video that went out recently, this is how to bunny hop an e-bike and why it's such an essential skill. It's important that you nail the manual first because that will make it much easier to do a bunny hop. And this again is all about using your body weight. Whilst there are ways of trying to cheat the bunny hop, you aren't gonna find they work very well on an e-bike because of the weight of the bike. So this is the best way to learn how to hop. And whilst the manual is the gateway to ride in gnarlier, more technical trails, the bunny hop gives you full access to ride the hardest of the trails. So step one of the bunny hop is the manual. So it's all about starting in your ready position, pumping straight down towards the saddle and then drop into the back of the bike, that L shape I always go on about. And you really do have to nail that first because if you try and bunny hop and you haven't got the manual really good, then you're gonna find yourself getting frustrated. So get that sorted, get your manual done and that should really feel like one movement. So that down and back should no longer be two movements, one smooth movement. Now for the hard part, the rear wheel lift. So you're in your manual position, your hips are nice and low over the rear axle, head is up, arms are straight. Now to lift the rear wheel, this is all about trying to now throw your weight up and forward. So hips come up towards the handlebars and that really should do most of the work for you. You can now add a couple of bits to help you out. The first is a scoop back against the pedals with your feet. So it doesn't matter if you're on flats or on clips, it should feel the same. Slightly toes down, push back, pressure into the pedals and scoop. The next one is to sort of push the bars away from you with your hands. So if you add that and the scoop, that's gonna help you out. But if you do too much of both of those, it's gonna end up being quite a heavy landing. So you don't wanna do that too much. So if you think about your hips being here, the bunny hop should now be down, back, up and forward. And the really hard part is getting the timing for all that. So again, that should now be one really smooth motion. And quite often for people, it's manual and then up and forward. And that's not quick enough probably. So work on your timing. So the correct timing is a little bit quicker. And when your front wheel starts to peak, that's when you should be standing up and going towards it. Whilst the technique to hop an e-bike is the same as a normal bike, I do feel like you really have to put a lot more movement into it. Exaggerated movements, throw my weight around a lot more because the ratio of my weight to the bike has changed quite a lot. So it's a lot more like trying to bunny hop a big downhill bike compared to a hardtail. A hardtail is going to take less effort than a downhill bike. An e-bike takes even more effort, but it's definitely worth practicing this because even if you don't get the bike off the floor, it's all about unweighting those wheels. Right, you've probably heard enough now about how to do a bunny hop, but it's your manual, it's your rear wheel lift, and it's the timing, don't forget the timing. And practice that, it can be frustrating and it can take a while, but you'll get it. So now I'm gonna show you where you can use that bunny hop on the trail. So I've got a set of routes here, five or six in a row that could pose a problem, especially in the wet, you could start sliding around on these. So this is a great example of when to actually unweight. So it's the same motion, you don't necessarily have to lift your bike completely off the floor, but your hips are up, there's not 100% weight on these tires, so hopefully they're gonna grip. You could also just hop the whole lot, but just be aware of where you're gonna land, so you don't wanna land in a you know, big hole or another route, that can be a problem. So that's taken away, hopefully, any risk of crashing on these routes, but also another great reason is that if you hop over these or run weight, you're actually taking away all that force because they're quite deep holes in between. Just banging through this is gonna slow you down. So hopping them, you'll carry loads more momentum. So you've got the bunny hop, great news. That is a manual and then a rear wheel lift. So now you can actually use that rear wheel lift by itself if you need to. A good example of that is the step I've got on the trail here. So I'm gonna bump my front wheel up that, but if my rear wheel hits it with all the weight on it and I'm pedaling, there's a chance I maybe could slide out, especially if that step had a bigger route on it. I definitely think I could. So what I'm gonna do now is ride on in, bump the front wheel up and then actually use my rear wheel lift to get the back wheel up and over the step and pedal away. Another great use for a bunny hop is for jumping. So occasionally you're gonna hit a jump at the perfect speed where you're not gonna need much input into the bike at all to clear that jump. However, sometimes you're gonna be going too slow and you need to make height to clear that gap. 
So this is when you translate your bunny hop exactly to the jump. As you hit the takeoff, you pump into the transition and then you drop to the back of the bike to fire the front wheel up into the air. As the rear wheel lifts off the floor, you then stand up and forward. You're basically exaggerating the takeoff using your bunny hop technique. It'll follow exactly the same shape and hopefully you'll clear that gap. So whilst that down and up motion might help you get your wheels off the floor, that's not gonna be very useful on the trail. For example, in this root section, if you do that technique, basically you're drawing a big square with your wheels up, along, and then down. So your front wheel might clear the roots, but your rear wheel isn't. So that's why it's really important to get that motion of front wheel and then rear wheel. That's gonna help you really clear much longer distances. The other technique that I said wasn't quite right was that good manual, but then picking up the rear wheel using your feet. Now, of course, that's gonna be easier on clipless pedals when you can just pull. You can do it on flats as well, but I'll show you why I don't recommend doing that. So in this route section, if you then use your rear wheel lift with your feet, but then you come up short, all your weight is over that rear tire. So that's gonna land heavy and it could slide out. Same with jumping. If you then pull up with your feet, you run out of space as well. So the seat's gonna hit in the bum and you can't go any further. So if you then realize you're coming up short on that jump, there's no way you can go from there. You're gonna case hard, that can cause you problems. Whereas if you use the right technique to lift the rear wheel, your weight's gonna be up and forward. And if your rear wheel lands a little bit short, hopefully you're gonna get away with that. If you're struggling with any part of this bunny hop, let us know in the comments section down below. And I can try and follow it up with another video to help you out. Also, keep your eyes peeled for another video coming soon. I'll show you a more in-depth how to jump. If you've not seen how to manual, click over there. Click over there for some descending tips. Hit that button to subscribe, give us a thumbs up.